Welcome to our maintenance scheduling in an integrated environment demonstration. Maintenance scheduling can be seen as the process of assigning labour tools and materials to a set of tasks and deciding the start and end time of each task while taking into consideration any interdependencies that exist between tasks. Today, maintenance scheduling is predominantly done through a manual process where the scheduler uses their own knowledge and experience of the tasks and resources to schedule the activities. This usually leads to a sub-efficient schedule with some risk of resource overload, and the process tends to be time-consuming. In this demo, we're going to show you how a manual maintenance scheduling process can be automated through the deployment of an optimization application from within a business system. In this process, the optimization application is seamlessly integrated to the business system in order to obtain the required input data, produce an optimized schedule, and make the result available to schedulers for further steps via the business system. Based on our past experience and evidence from independent studies, this type of automation usually leads to a 5 to 15% cost saving and improved service delivery in an optimum schedule against suboptimal ones that are created manually. Maximo is IBM enterprise asset management software that provides an excellent platform for managing all of the enterprise assets, their condition, maintenance requirements and work processes. It also has some scheduling interfaces that a scheduler can use to manually allocate tools, labour and materials to tasks related to a maintenance activity. But this could take some time when dealing with a complex activity. ILOG Optimization, on the other hand, is a powerful planning and scheduling engine that explores all alternatives to produce the optimal schedule, including start and end times of each task and any labour, tools and material allocations. ILOG does, however, require access to good quality data. In this demo, we show how we've embedded ILOG Optimization Engine inside Maximo to gain access to good quality data for ILOG and to transform the laborious manual scheduling process into an automated, fast and optimal schedule creating environment from within Maximo. In this demo, we'll be walking through a day in the life of a scheduler in which they will use the integrated system to identify the maintenance jobs that need to be performed and create the associated work orders and job plans. They will then use the embedded iLog engine to create an optimum schedule for a number of scenarios, analyze the results and run comparisons through iLog what if analysis capabilities, and then select the most suitable schedule that's going to be executed. This is the view the Rail Possession Planner would see as they log into the system. This is also known as the Start Center, and you can return to this view at any time by clicking the Start Center button in the toolbar here. Down the left-hand side, we have a list of applications that are particularly useful to the user. It's important to note that this is all completely customizable, and any one of the possible applications from the list in the Go To menu can be added in here. In the main body of the page, we have the bulletin board highlighting things of interest. Then we have the inbox and assignments that are specific to the user. If we were to log in as one of the maintenance workers, this is where we would see the list of all of their assignments for any work orders they were involved in. And finally, we have the open track renewals work orders, as this is what the Rail Possession Planner is responsible for. You can see that there are currently none open, but we will shortly be going through the process of creating one. Before we do that, let me just show you some of the information that's already stored in the system. Firstly, we have the labour application. This contains a list of all of the employees, their skills, and what shift they work. If you highlight a member of staff, as we have with the Lily Load Examiner here, you can then go to the other tab views to see more specific details about the resource. The Labour tab provides more information about the individual. The Craft tab shows details of her skills and the corresponding pay codes. The Availability tab shows what shifts she is available to work throughout the week. And the Qualifications tab shows any job-specific qualifications that she holds. 
so none in this case. Similarly, we have an application that holds the details of all of the available tools. The first tab shows the complete list of stock tools, including basic details such as the description, where it is stocked, and how many are available. Further details about the individual tools can be found in the remaining tabs. There are also details of other necessary resources, such as materials. Now that I've shown you some examples of the resource information that is stored in the system, we'll now go on to create a new work order where we'll need to allocate required resources to perform the tasks. So to do this, I'll go to the work order tracking application and click on the new work order icon here. The maintenance work that I need to schedule in this instance is for the renewal of an area of track. And we can create this work order using an existing job plan that's already contained within the system and includes details of all of the tasks and resource requirements for the work order to be completed. Once we've selected this job plan, we'll then select the available time window to perform this job plan by choosing the start no earlier than and finish no later than times in this window here. So in this example, we would like to get the work completed over the weekend to prevent disruption for commuters during the week. So we set the start no earlier than time as 11 p.m. on Friday, and the finish no later than time as 8 a.m. on Monday. We then click on the save icon to generate the work order. If we now go to the plans tab, we can see the details of the 15 tasks that need to be carried out to complete this work order. In addition to the tasks, the plans tab also shows details of all of the labor, materials, services and tool requirements corresponding to each task. So here we can see that this work order has 44 labor requirements, four material requirements and 21 tool requirements. If we now go to the assignments tab, we can see the details of the 234 individual resource requirements. This also shows that they are all currently waiting to be assigned. Rather than assigning these resources manually in a sub-optimal manner, we will be creating an optimum schedule using ILOG OGME optimization capabilities. To do this, we go to the scheduler application. The list tab displays all existing schedules that are available for us to work with. In this case, the rail planner has just one rail possession planner schedule. If we click on this, we can see more information about the schedule. Before we create this specific schedule, we need to change the selection criteria so that the schedule is being created for the work order that we just generated. Now we can click on the two buttons, firstly to export all of the information about the work order and secondly, to launch ODME Studio from within Maximo. A typical ODME project has a set of goals and requirements defined, a set of input data and corresponding output data, known as the project schedule. We can also interact with the application in a number of ways, especially by adjusting the planning parameters. These include the project planning parameters, the optimization parameters, the repair parameters, and the relaxation parameters. Relaxation parameters are of particular interest to schedulers because through these parameters, they can identify and relax constraints that are preventing a feasible schedule being generated. In this application, a number of goals are defined, including project make span, cost, and so on. Here, it is possible to activate and deactivate each goal, as well as setting an importance factor that will drive the optimal solution. The combination of these goals will drive the production of a schedule that is optimizing them. The input data section contains information on resources and activities which are pulled over from the Maximo Resource Database. Resources consist of the equipment 
and the workforce, including details on the individuals, their skills and their availabilities. Similarly, the work order consists of tasks to be carried out for the work order to be complete. As we saw in Maximo, some of these tasks have predecessors and each has a different resource requirement. The challenge here is to find the start and finish time for each task and allocate the available resources that are needed. This is a complicated job since there are so many constraints to consider with each of the 234 assignments and we have to create a schedule that satisfies constraints whilst taking into consideration the goals of the schedule so that, for example, the costs and disruption are kept at a minimum. With thousands of possible combinations of choices, it's very difficult to know how to best schedule this work order and this is why there is a real need for an optimization engine that's capable of examining all possible solutions. By selecting to solve the scenario, ODME searches through all valid combinations to create a schedule that satisfies all of the constraints and optimizes the selected goals. The output of the solution is presented in the Project Schedules section where we can visualise the activity allocations to resources and see their start and finish times in a number of ways. We can also take a look at various performance indicators of the schedule by looking at the goals. For example, in this case, the time to complete this work order is 54 hours. We can also observe a high cost against unperformed tasks and this is because we did not have a possession manager available to oversee the entire schedule. In the next section we'll describe how we can analyse this resource shortage by relaxing some of the constraints such as calendar availabilities. So OGME can also be used to create multiple scenarios to explore the effects of changes to the goals or the input data, such as seeing the effect of using contractors or seeing the impact of having more or less resources available. The scenarios created can be solved separately and the results can be compared against each other side by side. Here we will show how this is achieved. If you recall from the previous scenario, we did not have a possession manager available to oversee the whole task. So we're going to create a new scenario where we relax the availability calendars and see the impact of this relaxation on the entire solution. To do this, we will duplicate the current scenario and rename it to calendar relaxed to give it a meaningful name. We will then make the initial scenario a reference and check the differences box to enable tracking of the changes. We can now go to the newly created scenario, open the relaxation parameters section, check the relax availability calendars box and resolve for this scenario. Visualising the solution, we can observe that all tasks, including the possession management, have been scheduled and there is now no delay between tasks as we previously had. We can again observe these results by looking at the goals section. Here we can see that the penalty on unperformed tasks is now at zero as expected and the make span has reduced to 38 hours. The scheduler can then go on to explore multiple alternative scenarios and then decide which scenario is most suitable. This can then be made available back in the Maximo system where you can view the Gantt chart as well as seeing individual resource allocations.